Let's say you have some natural number n, which is the product of two unknown prime numbers p and q. How would you find what p and q are? For a small number like 15, you may quickly notice that p and q are 3 and 5. But what if n had hundreds of digits? Shor's algorithm is the only known efficient algorithm for factoring n and relies on quantum computing for being efficient. Well, what if I told you that Shor's algorithm essentially boils down to complex exponentials? You don't really need to understand how complex numbers work in detail or what even a complex exponential is. Just keep in mind that a complex number can be seen as a pair of real numbers, and its modulo square operation is the sum of the squares of both real numbers. For the sake of this video, you just need to know that the modulo square of a complex exponential is always 1. Get ready, because we are about to see how Shor's algorithm works from a different angle than usual. In quantum mechanics, pretty much everything is described by states and operators. Quantum states have this particular notation, known as the bracket notation. A nice and simple quantum system is the spin of an electron, which can be up, down, or any superposition of both basic states, as long as probability is conserved. The modulo square of complex coefficients alpha and beta are the probabilities that the spin will be measured up or down respectively. After a measurement, the state collapses into the measured direction. For example, if we measure the spin up, the quantum state will collapse into the up state after the measurement. Now let's use a different name for the base options and name them 0 and 1. This is known as a qubit, similar to a bit, but with additional cool quantum properties we can exploit. Aside from measurements, a system evolves by applying unitary operators to it, also known as quantum gates in this context. The unitary condition ensures that probability is conserved. It is also convenient to think of quantum states as vectors and quantum gates as unitary matrices. A very simple gate is the NOT gate, also known as the poly X gate, which flips a qubit the same way classical negation flips a bit. Feel free to pause the video for a second and do the matrix vector math so you can see the gate in action. What about multiple qubits? Well, we just combine the underlying quantum systems and work with them together. Some qubits of a multi-qubit state may be used to represent a certain number, the same way a 16-bit sequence may be used to encode two 8-bit numbers in a computer. These are known as quantum registers, analogous to classical registers in classical computing. All right, let's get back to complex exponentials. From the properties of the modulo square operation, any state coefficient multiplied by a complex exponential still results in the same probability. In this sense, a complex exponential that is a common factor of all coefficients has basically no effect. These are known as global phases, and for any calculations they can be neglected. Like with any square matrix, Quantum gates have their corresponding pairs of eigenstates and eigenvalues. These are pairs of quantum states and complex numbers that satisfy this property. In other words, the resulting quantum state after applying the gate is the same quantum state as before, up to some complex constant which is the eigenvalue. In the case of unitary gates, eigenvalues must be complex exponentials, again so that total probability is conserved. Note these last two aspects. Complex exponentials are often negligible in quantum states, but they are also the form that quantum gate eigenvalues take. What if, given a certain known gate and one of its known eigenstates, we wanted to find the corresponding eigenvalue? We get nothing from just applying the gate to its eigenstate, since that spits out a global phase. We need to find a different way. For this purpose, there is a well-known quantum algorithm known as quantum phase estimation, or just QPE. The detailed circuit and the actual procedure is sadly beyond the scope of this video. The circuit works with two quantum registers. A top register, where the eigenvalue will be extracted, and a bottom register where the gate will act. 
the top register is initialized with all zeros and the bottom register is prepared with the input eigenstate. In the way QPE works, measuring the top register in the end results in something close to a power of two times the eigenvalue argument, while the bottom register is left unchanged. If that value happens to be an exact integer, then measuring the top register will yield this value, encoded as a qubit integer, with 100% probability. In general, this value will not be an integer. The most likely measurements will be the closest integers to this value, resulting in probability spikes centered around it, as shown in these example plots. For instance, for an argument of one-third, the value will never be an integer despite the qubit count. If the top register has four qubits, the value is 5.333, where five is the nearest integer. The mostly likely measurement will be five encoded in the top register, from where the argument is extracted to be 0 0.3125, an approximation of the real value of a third. Increasing the qubit count results in more precise extractions of the eigenvalue argument. There is a special case we need to discuss, where the bottom register is not initialized with a pure eigenstate, but with a uniform superposition of m eigenstates of the quantum gate. In this case, the most likely values to measure are the closest integers to the power of 2 factor times the eigenvalue argument for each present eigenstate. The resulting probability distribution now consists of several spikes around the values, like shown in this graph. This graph is actually from Shor's original paper, where the algorithm is described in a different way, but consists on the same underlying math. The main point of this video is that quantum phase estimation is the essential component behind the quantum part of Shor's algorithm. Shor's algorithm consists of several steps. The theory behind the steps is also beyond the scope of this video, but the third step is relevant for us, sir. For the chosen integer a, some special property needs to be calculated, known as its order. This property has to do with modular arithmetics. The other steps can be done efficiently in a regular computer, but there is no known classical way to find the order efficiently. This is why Shor's algorithm requires quantum computing to be efficient. Let's briefly touch modular arithmetics in order to explain an operation needed to qualitatively understand how the quantum part of Shor's algorithm works. Under modular arithmetics, values essentially wrap around a certain integer known as the modulus. For example, under modulo 60 arithmetic, the value of 61 is actually 1, and the value of 73 is actually 13. The overall idea is to wrap any value greater or equal to the modulus. I intentionally used 60 as an example, since it is behind the modular arithmetic we use for minutes and seconds. The operation we care about is modular multiplication, or modular product, consisting of regular multiplications whose result is wrapped around the modulus. To avoid the clumsy notation typically used for modular multiplication, I will indicate it with a circle and the modulus, like this. So, why is this operation so important? Let's imagine a quantum gate that performs modulo n multiplication by the element a on the value encoded by a quantum register. This gate happens to have the following r eigenstate and eigenvalue pairs. The expression of the eigenstates is rather funky, to the point where my previous notation for modular multiplication cannot be nicely used, since this expression contains modular exponentiation. We only care about the eigenvalues, though, which contain our desired value r to be extracted. You might already see where this is going. QPE is the key to extract one of those eigenvalues. However, there is a major caveat. There is no way to prepare one of the eigenstates, since preparing them requires knowing r beforehand. This is not a problem since we can make use of the fact that the uniform superposition of all eigenstates happens to be the integer 1, encoded in the quantum register, quite a nice property that saves us from trouble. This way, applying QPE with this superposition will result in probability spikes like the ones shown before, 
centered around the closest integers to the eigenvalues times the power of 2 factor e. This procedure to extract the order r for a chosen number a, the quantum step needed in Shor's algorithm, is known as quantum period finding. By the way, period and order are synonyms for the same property r. Also note that I have intentionally avoided talking about the qubit requirements of the entire circuit, since that is not really relevant for the point of this video. We only need to know that the top register has q qubits. The result of the phase estimation procedure, with decent probability, is an integer close to this power of 2 times as over r. We need to discuss the output a bit more. We do not even necessarily extract the fraction of s and r, but some integer y close to it instead. What does this even tell us about the value of r? After all, both s and r are unknown, since s can be any value between 0 and r minus 1. The result needs some post-processing to make sense of it. The post-processing relies on continued fractions expansions, which is another topic beyond the scope of this video, but in most cases it allows to obtain the value of r, as long as y is indeed the closest integer to the expression. The quantum circuit for QPE along with this post-processing, which may be done classically, together form the step in Shor's algorithm to extract the order r. So, what have we learned in this video? The only currently known efficient way to factor primes requires quantum computing. That quantum computing step involves finding a particular value, the order r for the chosen element a. There is a certain quantum gate whose eigenvalues are complex exponentials and whose arguments contain r in a way that er can be extracted using classical post-processing. Obtaining complex exponential eigenvalues from quantum gates is not something trivial, but a dedicated procedure exists that extracts them with decent probability. This video qualitatively showed to how complex numbers, essential in quantum mechanics, also happen to be essential to the completely unrelated problem of factoring numbers. There were really interesting topics that I barely mentioned, like the detailed theory behind Shor's algorithm and its deep relationship with modular arithmetics, the actual quantum algorithm behind phase estimation, how does one implement a quantum gate that performs modular multiplication, and many more. Tell me in the comments if you would like to see these or other related topics in detail on a future video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this topic as much as I do.